Thank you, Jesus. I already I could not pay. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. Lisa Barabra, La Cadada Bazo, Kudubu, Lika Debe, Lisa Cadabe, Zika Debe, Lika Debe, Rika Bri, Lika Debe, La Cadada Bazi, Cadada Bazi, Cadada Bay, Lika Debe, Lisa Cadada Bazi, Cadada Bay, Lika Debe. Holy Spirit, have your way. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Good evening. My name is Apostle Emmanuel Okank, and I welcome all of you, my followers and believers, Christians. I believe you are all doing well. Um, welcome to my page, um, Apostle Emmanuel Okank from Ghana, Conkins Ministries. And um, this is the time, um, that is the time with the word of truth. That is, uh, we start from Tuesdays to Thursday around this time. Friends in America, United States of America, I start at 8 p.m. That is, I mean, GMT negative 4 or minus 4. So um, if it is 8 o'clock p.m. in your place, it is 12 here. And I welcome all of you here. Welcome, Cassandra Swendal. Um, God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Stephanie Thompson, God bless you for watching. I please encourage you to kindly like and share. Kindly like and share and invite friends as well to join. Because we have been doing this for the past years. For the past years. And through this um, tele-evangelism, and there are souls that has been converted and there are a lot of testimony. So if you are here, you are not here by mistake, but you are here by the, by the purpose and, and by, the, by the plans of God. So I welcome all of you. Um, good evening once again. My name is Apostle Iman Okai. Can we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you. I bless your name. Indeed, yes, you are God. I commit this life into your hands this sermon into your hands father any soul that will watch and listen father i pray that may your word be always a seed in their mind and to bear fruit in their life in the name of jesus touch their heart open their mind open their ears to understand the word and walk in your world in the world in the name of jesus christ i pray and father any kind of worldly things that would destroy them all distract them from your word father we come against it in the name of jesus tonight may let your spirit come and encourage them and walk upright and diligently in thy name in the name of our lord jesus christ i pray amen amen and um, god bless you for joining kalini beckford god bless you for joining and tonight we are going to move on and i'm preaching on a topic or making a teachings on a topic rise up take courage and act rise up take courage and act and we take our um study verse in ezra chapter 10 verse 4 i read Arise, for this matter is your responsibility, but we will be with you. Be courageous and act. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, 
I want you to like and share, invite friends. Now, as we just read from Ezra chapter 10, verse 4, says that arise. Before we come onto that verse, Ezra's prayer, Ezra's prayer in Ezra chapter 9 is followed by a demonstration of um, contrition. Hallelujah. He weaves and lies his face down upon the ground. A large assembly of men and women and children join him. Humbly recognize their sin. Now, as according to the scripture, Shachaniah, Shachaniah approached Ezra with the suggestion that they get right with God by making a covenant with the Lord to put away their pagan wives and their children and, and, and their intermarriage to pagans was, was strictly forbidden in the law. And God told them not to have this kind of, I mean, um, relationship with people that does not know God. Do you understand? So, if you study one of the um, theologian, or let me say, Billy Graham, once commented about resolving a marital problems this way. And he says that it is hard to unscrabble X. Now, the command, the command in the Torah was clear. If you read Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 3 to 4, the Bible says that do not intermarry with them. Do not give your daughters to their sons or take their daughters for your sons. Hallelujah. For they will turn your sons away from following me to serve other gods. And the Lord's anger will burn against you and will quickly destroy you. Hallelujah. Now, not only was this command disregarded by the public, but it was also disregarded by the um, Levites and the priests. Praise the Lord. Hey, I see you evangelist out here. How are you doing? How is ministry? And um, my good friend, Lisa um, Joseph, how are you doing? You see? So this was not only disregarded by the public, but it was also disregarded by the Levites and the priests. If you read Ezra chapter 10, verse 2 to 3, the Bible says that Shikania, the son of Jehel, one of the sons of Elam, said to Ezra, We have been unfaithful to our God and have married foreign women from the peoples of the land. Yet now there is hope for Israel in spite of this. Verse 3 says that, So now let us make a covenant. If you have a Bible, and the letter word, let us make a covenant with our God to put away all the wives and their children according to the counsel of my Lord of those who terrible at the commandment of our God and let it be done according to the law. So I'm just giving you an emphasis of what happened in why Exodus and um, why Ezra chapter 10 verse 4 they said rise up you see so it is all about Ezra chapter 9 I'm talking about now if you read the Bible the apostles Paul advice is quite different from Shekinahs in, in in first Corinthians chapter 7 verse 12 
to 17, the Bible talks um, that Apostle Paul says to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 12, that says that, To rest I say, I, not the Lord, that if any man brother has a wife who is unbeliever, and she consent to live with him, he should not divorce her. You see? So he spoke about this, and he said that if any woman has husband who is an unbeliever, and he consents to live with her, she should not divorce him. So if you get time, you can read. Now, there is no record that the Lord approved of Shekinah's remedy. But they are compromised with paganism. Had to be knowledge and put right somehow. So, God commanded, or God command is that his people, by uh, his, his people, must be holy and separate in their devotion with this kind of paganism. So, there is a a word that, uh, there's a phrase that I said, correction courses are not always easy. Correction courses are not always easy, but they need to be taken. Now, back to our main scriptures. So this is what happened in Ezra chapter 9. Now, back, let's come back to Ezra chapter 10. Ezra chapter 10, quickly verse 4. The Bible says that, Arise, for this matter is your responsibility. But we will be with you. Be courageous and act. Back to Ezra. Ezra was a very remarkable man. He represented the Persian court as a governor in Judea. But this was the least feature of his distinction. He was a man of the most exemplar piety a very profound scholar and a with her the subject of divine inspiration. When it was noised in the city that such a man had rent his clothes, there was naturally a vast concourse of people. Listen, in the presence of this assembly, Ezra Offered his prayer to God. He offered his prayer to God. In the whole of which there is not an expression of hope. So this stirred the soul of Sikenia to deliver his speech, which was, I mean, eminently wise and most appropriate to the occasions. Do you understand? So, listen, look. Oh, Magdali, Magda, God bless you. Greetings, and I respond to you. Thank you for joining. Listen, though. The topic for today is rise up, take courage, and act. Ezra chapter 10, verse 4. Listen, though. The determination of people to get right with God is highlighted by the fact that they set outside the temple listening to Ezra, trembling in, 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 in the pouring rain. So if you read Ezra chapter 10, verse, verse 4 says that this matter is in your hands. Rise up, Ezra. We will support you. So the people say that they will support Ezra because they knew that they have offended God and do it. So the book of Ezra Begin where Second Chronicles left off. The decree of King Cyprus for the release of the captives to their uh, native land. The book of Ezra is only out of five fold exilic books in the Bible. And Ezra is one of the most prominent figures in the immediate aftermath of the, I mean, exile. So um, Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel rebuilt the temple and Ezra re-established the law. 
Nehemiah rebuilt the city walls, while Ezra was the title character of the book. So it was only introduced from chapter 7 onwards. And after a 57 years gap, an interval when the event accounted in the book of Esther had taken place. I'm just giving an history about Ezra. Do you understand? So he, 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 he was sent back. Ezra was sent back to reestablish the law. After the people had returned back to their native land. So Ezra was sent to reward, establish the law. A matter of great significance to the Israelites as they were that far only governed by the laws of what? Persia. My name is Apostle Emmanuel Okai and welcome to my program that I do um, Tuesdays to Thursdays. That is time with the word of truth. You see? Time with the word of truth. Now, while the laws of Persians wouldn't have stopped the Israelites from intermarrying with their pagan tribes, the laws of Moses would. And now there was a problem which demanded to be dealt with. So Ezra, 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 whatever, Ezra collapsed. He collapsed. And he fell onto his knees. And he went onto a long session of prayer and weeping. But Shekinah, the son of Jehel, came to remind him that there is hope. There is hope. This evening, if you know you have lost hope, I am telling you there is hope. There is hope coming on your way. May you get a hope and may you stand up. Whatever that you think you cannot do, have hope, get a hope and have faith that you can do it. You can do it. There is hope. Arise. Be courageous and do it. There is hope. Shekinia, the son of Jehel, came to remind him that there is hope. But Ezra needed to stand tall with resolve. Hallelujah. So, in this study, we will examine the words of Shekinah and identify certain attributes that a leader must have even in modern times. Praise the Lord. Now, the Bible says that in Ezra chapter 10 verse 4, it says that, rise up. Rise up. Listen, oh, we know from the previous chapter that Ezra was kneeling and crying, crying out to God in his shame and guilt for his dry. Then at the evening, at the evening sacrifice, he said, I rose from my self abasement with my tunic and my cloak torn and fell on my knees with my hands spread out to the Lord of my God. If you read Ezra chapter 9, verse 5. So, was he kneeling? Was he kneeling because he had sinned? And was he praying for forgiveness for himself? No. Ezra did not kneel because he had sinned. Ezra did not pray for forgiveness for himself. No. He has he had no sin. He has no heir. He has no heir. And, and he was kneeling and crying out to God. He was kneeling and crying out to God. A prayer of horror. A prayer of horror. A prayer of confession. As a weight of what his people had done. Boy, down on him. 
So this was what, what this was a priest of the people. He, 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 I, I see him as, as a priest. I, I, I mean, a priest of the people, a leader of the people, someone whom the Persia king had given authority over the Philistines and the, 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 over the Israelites. His first reaction upon hearing the news was to nail and cry and pray to God. What a great leader. What a leader. His first reaction about the sin of, 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 of the Israelites. He knelt down and cried. Pray to God. However, when Shekinah came to speak to him, he analyzed the situation in an objective manner for Ezra. The situation was so bad. The situation it, it was, was very, very bad. The situation is bad. But not desperate. The Israelites had sinned. But they were not hopeless. Now crying over. This is good. But rising up. Rising up. And doing something about it. Is better. So my beloved. Viewers. So rise up. Rise up. Wherever you are falling, wherever you are falling in your ministry, wherever you are falling in your life, in the journey of your Christian life, I plead to you and I say that there is hope that you can rise up, rise up, rise up and do something. Rise up, wake up, cry unto God and God will hear your prayer. Rise up. And Shekinah said to Ezra, Ezra, rise up. And do something about it. The Bible says. That Ezra. Rise up. This matter is in your hands. Listen to. Ezra. Is a priest. Is a leader. Is a pastor. A pastor. A man of God. Must not overlook don't look at the sins of his people. He need to stand in the gap for them. To pray for them. I see the sin as sickness, as disease, as spiritual death. Any man of God need to pray for the church, for his members, for them to stand. The man of God needs to rise up, to wake up, to encourage them, the members. Listen, if you are a man of God, if you are a pastor, you are an apostle, you are an evangelist, whoever, whatever you find yourself in the kingdom of God that you have been choosing in a position, listen, any soul that comes to sit under your feet, his soul is in your hands. If he fall, it's in your hands. If he stand, it's in your hands. You need to take good care of them. When they fall, you need to stand on your feet for them to rise up. You must not look unto them for them to die in their sins. So in Ezekiel, somewhere Ezekiel says that have you are the watchman. Go and warn the people. For if you warn them and they don't listen, they'll, 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 they'll carry their own sin. But when they when, when they don't when, when when you don't warn them and they die in their sins, they, their blood will be asked from you. So Ezra rose up 
and he prayed and cried. The Bible says that this is the matter in your hands as a scribe, as a priest, and as a leader of his people. It was only right that Ezra take charge at the time of crisis for their nation, for the people. He could have washed his hands away from them. Yes, he could have washed his hands away from them. Because he had, he had no seed. He had no earth. But that would not... That, 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 that not... I mean, an example as a leader. But that's what leaders do. He didn't wash his hands away from them. Your clear of mind of your sin can be, I mean, stand by your prophet. You clear your people's mess as a pastor, as a prophet, as an evangelist, as an appointed, as, a, as an, I mean, the choosing ones. You clear your people's what mess. You take the matter of your people into your own hands. Their problem is your problem. Their problem is your problem. Their sin is your sin. Why not your sin? The members that God has assigned them to you. Their problem is your problem. Their sin is your sin. Their sickness is your sickness. Because if it affects them, it will affect you. Their sins, while not your sin, affect you. Their guilt is your guilt. This is when the people need to stay united. This is when the people need to stay united. And unity starts from the leadership level. Unity starts well, from what? The leadership level. So indeed, that was what Ezra did in the aftermath of, of, of this verse. He gathered the people together. A proclamation was then issued throughout Judah and Jerusalem for all the exiles to assemble in the Jerusalem. And they went to him and said, we will support you. I'm doing some exegesis. He said that. So we will support you. Listen. Nobody can lead without support. A leader cannot lead without support. You cannot become a leader if you don't have any followers. Listen myself. Nobody can lead without any support. You cannot become a leader if you don't have any followers. Ezra was a man of authority. He was charged by the king of Persia himself to go back to Jerusalem and reestablish the law. In doing that, he was given authority over the Israelites. He was also a man who had proven to be worthy of that charge. A learned man well versed in the law. Indeed, listen up. In that time, in that time, there was no one else other than Ezra, who was able to take charge of this situation. There was no one else to support. Ezra was a clear mind apart. Do you understand? However, that declaration and, 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 and the promise of support was crucial. 
Every leader needs support. Every leader needs what? Support. Or they cannot rise up. And the Bible went on and said, says that, so take courage. Take courage. Why did he tell Ezra to take courage? Shekinah, the son of Gilead. Why did he said to him, take courage? Why did he tell Ezra to take courage? Was Ezra afraid? No. I think Ezra was indeed. Though he might maybe or somehow be afraid. Because it was a tall order. It was a tall what order to take this matter into his hands. Pastors, wake up. Pastors, wake up. Men of God today, modern men of God today, wake up. Take the matters of your members into your hands. Members, if you are in trouble, if you, are in, if you know you have sinned, if you are in challenges, if you are in jeopardy, if you are in problem, take your matter to the pastor. They are the reason why they have been choosing. Do you understand? Let, let me say something. It is, it is you as a member because of your problem God called some people God called prophets God called apostles God called teachers God called pastors God called evangelists it is because of you because of you because of your soul so that they can teach you to walk in the right way. To walk uprightly and diligently. So if you read the Bible in Luke chapter 15. When uh, uh, Lazarus died. And um, the rich man died. Lazarus went to the bosom of Abraham. And the rich man was buried. Now he was in hell. And he was telling Abraham. To tell Lazarus to dig his figure into the water. To, to, to fall on his tongue. You see, now, and the, the king who died told Abraham that, Abraham, where I am, I'm suffering. So go, uh, can, can you take me back? Can you plead on my behalf so I can go back into the world to tell my people what I'm facing here? And the word of God says, Abraham said to him, you shouldn't worry. There are prophets, there are preachers there to teach them. To preach them. You see? So we men of God, we pastors, we are called to solve the problem of our members, of the nation, of the congregation, of our people. But there are some pastors. All is about them. They don't care if you are dying or you are doing well. All they need is money. All they need is, I mean, good cars, good house, I mean, dress well, materialistic, and luxury things. I'm not saying all these things are not good, but let the burden of the people be your burden. As a man of God, because according to Ezra, what I've learned about Ezra he took the matter of the people into his care. Do you understand? So members, listeners, if you have a problem, take it to your pastor. If your pastor is not able to solve it for you, spiritually and physically, then you need to look for another pastor who can pastor you well. Who can take good care of you. Spiritually and physically. God bless you, Cassandra. God bless you, Lisa. 
My name is Apostle Emmanuel Okain. Thank you for joining. Um, kindly like this video and share it. If you want to support the ministry, Cronkies Ministry, we are in Ghana. Um, and you can support in any how, in any kind. Okay? Amen. So, as I continue, Ezra took the matter of his people into his own hands. It, it, it was like asking him to take the responsibility of something he did not do and was not aware of. And the face goes rough while standing in front of everybody else. Note, 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 note this. His immediate reaction, not his immediate reaction, his prayer to God was full of grief, full of guilt, full of fear of the wrath of God which he knew was setting to come as a man of God, as a man of God, as a man of God, as a man who loved and reverent God. He knew, he knew that God was just. Listen, I, I, the Bible says that I am too ashamed. The Bible says that I am too ashamed and disgrace my God to lift up my face to you because our sins are higher than our heads and our guilt has reached to the heavens. Ezra chapter 9 verse 6. You see? So, would you not be angry enough with us to destroy us, leaving us no remnant or survivor? If you read Ezra chapter 9, verse 40, that's what it says. So, to Ezra, their deeds were evil and their guilt was great. To remedy their wrongdoings would require great courage. It will be an unpopular move. And there may be even be great opposition to the indeed. He asked them to separate from their foreign wives. And that sure doesn't sound easy. So Ezra stood, took the matter of the people, of, his, of, of, of the nation, and they bear it. I see Ezra as a type of Jesus Christ. I see Ezra a type of Jesus Christ in bear the pain. Ezra has not done anything. Jesus Christ has not sinned. Ezra prayed. Jesus Christ prayed. Jesus Christ cried. He said, Eli, Eli, Satan, Eli. He said, my father, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Listen, he cried. He cried. Ezra also cried. The Lord prayed. He said, God, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. I see Ezra as a type of Jesus Christ. He took the pain. He has not done anything. They, 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 they disgraced him. His own people rejected him. And Ezra took the pain. He went before God and prayed. For the sins of the people. Now, 
the aftermath of the passage, it says, and act, and act, and act, and act, or do it. Ezra chapter 10, verse 4. Say, and if you read it, the last verse says, and act. Other translation will say, and do it. So, do it at the end of the day. Nothing matters if you do not do it. It wouldn't matter even if you take the matter up in your own hands. But don't do anything. If it wouldn't matter even if the whole world supported you. But you do nothing. It wouldn't matter if you rise up. But do not do a thing. It wouldn't matter if you are full of courage, but you don't act, you don't do it. Did Ezra do it? Yes. Ezra did it. So Ezra rose up, gathered the people, and told them what to do, and dealt with the matter. Believer. Do you understand? Also, listeners, also, stand behind your pastor. Support him. Stand behind your pastor and support him. Because your men of God, the pastors, support you. They take your matters into their hands and they suffer it whilst you are sleeping. Support your pastors. Support the preachers. Support the men of God. Support the apostles, the bishops. Support them. Ezra was a spiritual leader of the Jewish exiled in Babylon. He was part of the group, I mean, that returned to Jerusalem some years after the initial waves of the returnings. And when he arrived, he discovered that all was not as it should be. When he arrived, the members of the Jewish community were as were marrying wives and all these things. Finally, one of the men in the group spoke to Ezra, calling on him to resolve the issue. But indeed, it did more that he can do. He pleaded his support along with that of the elders gathering there. Say, Rise up. This matter is in your hands. We will support you. Listen, he says that we will support you. Shekinia says that we will support you. You need to support your pastor. Support your pastor. Support him in any kind, any way. People of today, they always think about their money. They always think about their food. They always think about, um, I don't want to support this pastor. I don't want to give something. I mean, Means that your mind has been eaten up by the devil. You see? Your mind has been eaten up by the devil. But listen, why the, while the circumstances are different today, our pastors or your pastors are still often called on to make hard and challenging decisions and to follow through on them. Decisions that may be well not be popular with such for the congregation of the congregation. Will we trust that he is God's man for this time in the life of the church and support him? Or we will complain and resist his effort? How much better it will be for us if we, we, we would all stand behind our pastors, our prophets, 
our apostles, our bishops, to support them, support him, like the assembly did for Ezra. Believer, a word of caution though, I am not suggesting that we follow our pastors if they are acting or leading, I mean, in a ways or in ways that are contrary to, to the scripture. We should instead flee from these false prophets. You understand? But if we believe that God has called them to where they are, then we should support them and follow them. Do you understand? We should support them and follow them. Yet, even if a man like Ezra needed encouragement and support from somebody else to stop his despair and take charge as he should, rise up and take courage and act. Do it because we will support you. Often, as new leaders rise up, pastors, they have risen up. They need your encouragement. They need your support. I'm a man of God. With the ministry, this my, I'm, I'm in my church right now. You understand? We need support from you people. We need support. Because we do pray for you. We do spiritual and physically. So we need support. I'm not saying in case of I'm doing something wrong, you have no right to, I mean, to approach me to, to say in front of me. You have the right. But as a man of God, also need support. And as I said, any man of God or any leader who has no followers is not a leader. Because a leader comes with followers. Do you understand? Ezra had devoted himself to, to study and observe the law of the Lord and to teach and its decree and laws in his tribe. This was a good man, a righteous man, a man made by God to lead the Israelite. He was encouraged. What is your encouragement? Do you encourage your pastor? Do you encourage your pastor? When was the last time even friends, people that they send me friend requests or sometimes I send people friend requests? That is all. When I just send a motivational message, they just block me. They just block me. Someone will just call me and say all kind of F words. Some, some, they just recently... A woman of God, she claims she's a woman of God. She called me and said, why must I send her, I mean, the inspirational message? And man of God, why do you call me? They talk to me. And she was so mean. She was so mean. As if, I'm, I don't know, I, I'm coming for, for a silver and gold or I'm coming for... Uh, uh, people from Africa, a lot of people from Africa have been sending her messages and she don't understand why my son sending her messages and she called herself a woman of God. But we are here to encourage one another. Iron sharpen iron. We are here to support one another. I pray for anyone that is watching me right now. I pray for anyone that is sharing and liking. Share it to souls. Share it to people so that they'll be blessed. It is, it, it is part of the supporting. So what am I trying to say? Your, your, your pastor, the man of God, has taken your problem into his hands. Whilst you are asleep, he is praying for you. Whilst you are enjoying, he is praying for you. When there is any spiritual attack, he bear it. But you don't. 
So you need to encourage them, support them in any kind. And I believe that God will bless you. Amen. Thank you very much. My name is Apostle Emmanuel Otain. And I believe that you are blessed with this powerful message. I appreciate your time, your coming, your support. I would like you to share it to people and invite people also to watch, to replay later. If you want to support the ministry, if you want to support my ministry, you can contact me on my Facebook Messenger or my WhatsApp and I'll respond to you for you to download the wealth them to sow seed to support the ministry, any donation that you have. I am not a beggar here. I, I, I don't come here to beg. I come here to preach the word of God. But if the word has touched your heart or feel like supporting, you can contact my Facebook Messenger and I'll respond to you. Now, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you, Lord. I bless you for bringing this message to your children. As they go to listen to replay the message, Father, open doors for them, bless them. Let them understand your word widely and get wisdom to support their, 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 their shepherds in the name of Jesus Christ, for them to encourage as well in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we turn unto you always and we stay connected to you. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for blessing us this evening with this powerful message. Amen. Amen. God bless you and God keep you. Um, see you tomorrow. Tomorrow, same time here. That is, I mean, 8 p.m. wherever you are in your time. Other people, some other people, their time will be 7 p.m. or um, 6 p.m. Because of the time difference. I'm coming from Ghana and I start my life at 12 a.m. midnight. God bless you and God keep him a countenance shine upon you. Peace. Shalom.